In the early days of Dante, most networks consisted of a single subnet, with all devices communicating easily within a single network segment. As time went on and Dante networks grew, the need for multiple subnets became more common. Today, many Dante networks are comprised of multiple subnets, and we often need Dante traffic to cross these subnet boundaries. However, if devices are in different subnets, Dante controller will not be able to discover all the devices on the network, or make subscriptions between devices in different subnets. With Dante Director, devices have the ability to route media to each other even if they are in different subnets, and as long as the distant subnets are routed. Let's take a look at how to accomplish this. To route media packets across subnets, the end user will need to have already configured a multi-subnet network with a router or layer 3 switch to route between them. I'm currently using two 8-port Cisco CBS350 network switches. I have one network switch configured with all ports in VLAN 10. There is a DHCP server for VLAN 10 handing out addresses in the 192.168.10.0 slash 24 range. The other switch is configured with all ports in VLAN 20, with a DHCP server handing out addresses in the 192.168.20.0 slash 24 range. The two network switches are trunked together, and I have configured the switches for inner VLAN routing. If you'd like to learn more about how to set your own multi-subnet network, please check out our Manage Switch tutorial guide. Use the QR code on screen to access the guide or go to www.getdante.com to download it. To start routing media across subnets, I first need to enroll devices into the same Dante Director site. If you are not familiar with the concepts of sites in Dante Director, I recommend watching the first three videos in this series before watching the rest of this video. In order to enroll devices from the different subnets into the same Dante Director site, I will start by connecting my computer to VLAN 10, which is the 192.168.10.0/24 network. When I select my Dante interface, I'll want to make sure I'm selecting the interface that's in the correct subnet. As you can see, Dante Controller will automatically discover Dante devices in this subnet. I would like to enroll these devices into the Dante Director site called Auditorium. To enroll the devices, I will log into Dante Director, navigate to the Auditorium site, and click Add Devices. Dante Controller will automatically open again, prompting me to enroll the devices into the Auditorium site. I will select the devices to enroll and click OK. Click OK again and give the devices time to enroll into that site. Now, when I navigate to the auditorium site in Dante Controller, I see that the devices were successfully enrolled. To enroll devices from the other subnet into the auditorium site, I will need to physically move my computer over to VLAN 20. Once my computer is connected to VLAN 20, I will bring up Dante Controller. Select my Dante interface, and you'll see that Dante Controller discovered all devices in the 192.168.20.0/24 range. To enroll these devices into Dante Director, I will log back in and select the auditorium site once again. When I select the device tab, I see the devices from 192.168.10.0 that I've already enrolled into the auditorium. To enroll the devices from 192.168.20.0, I'll go back to the status tab and click add devices. Once again, Dante controller will open and prompt me to enroll devices into the auditorium. I will select the devices to enroll and click OK. Select OK to confirm and give your devices time to enroll into that site. When I navigate to the auditorium site, I see that the devices from both subnets are now enrolled. Before we can route audio between devices in different subnets, 
we need to make sure all devices are synchronized to the same PTP clock. I want to preface this by saying that this video provides only a brief explanation of the recommended clocking settings when using the Dante Director's cross subnet routing feature. This is not meant to be a comprehensive overview of how Dante clocking works. If you want to learn more about Dante clocking, please refer to the clocking chapter from the Dante Level 2 Certification Course and the clocking chapter from the Dante Domain Manager Administrator Certification Course. To learn more, visit www.getdante.com slash resources slash training. Let's start by taking a look at the recommended clocking settings for a multi-subnet environment using Dante Director. First, each site requires a shared PTP clock, which is used to keep all Dante devices synchronized. Second, when using Dante Director, devices in different subnets can route media to each other as long as the subnets are IP routed. Each subnet requires at least one device to have unicast clocking enabled. It is best practice to enable two per subnet, so if one fails, another device can take over as the unicast clock for that subnet. Third, unicast clocking is not required for single subnet installations. Finally, Dante Director provides the ability to manually configure clocking settings on a per device basis, or use the auto configuration function to configure clocking automatically based on your network's unique characteristics. If you'd like to configure clocking manually, simply scroll down to the clock status and control section. This section organizes devices by subnet and allows the user to configure clocking manually for the site. When configuring the site's clocking, you'll first need to choose a preferred leader, which is the shared PTP clock device for the entire site. To select a preferred leader, simply click to enable the device you want and turn off preferred leader on all other devices. For example, I will select the mixer to be my new preferred leader, and I'll deselect the speaker. After a few seconds, the configuration will take effect and will be reflected in Dante Director and Dante Controller. One of the benefits of Dante is its ease of use. You don't need to manually configure your clocking settings in most cases. Should you choose to manually configure clocking in Dante Director, please note that it is relatively easy to break your clocking configuration, which will cause all sorts of issues on your network. Let's look at an example. I'm going to change the clocking of some of the devices in just one of the subnets. I will disable unicast clocking for all the devices and add two preferred leaders instead. Let's see what happens after the change takes effect. Because I did not follow the recommended guidelines, I've now created an issue. And a yellow triangle with an exclamation point appears on the status tab. If I click on the status tab, a message is presented stating there are multiple grand leaders in this site. Let's navigate back to the clocking tab and click auto configure. This will reconfigure clocking automatically for the entire site. The clocking settings will take a few seconds to be reconfigured, but I'll know the issue has been resolved when the status indicator disappears. If I scroll down, I can see the changes have taken effect and the clocking symbols have updated to indicate which devices are the grand leader and multicast leader for each subnet. Now that we have our clocking configured, let's route audio between two devices in different subnets. Here I am back in the auditorium site. With my devices in the same site and clocking configured, I have the ability to route audio from a device in one subnet to a device in a different subnet. For example, I can make a subscription between a microphone in one subnet and a mixer in the other. A green check mark in Dante Controller indicates a successful subscription and audio is now being routed between subnets. To see the details about each device in the auditorium site, Navigate to the Device Info tab in Dante Controller. This tab gives us detailed information for each device in the site. For example, 
we see each device's name, model number, and the primary IP address assigned to each device. Most importantly, you can see that devices are organized by subnet. Next, let's look at the clock status tab. Dante Controller is showing how clocking is currently configured for all devices in the auditorium site, including which devices are the clock leader and which devices are the boundary clock for each subnet. Finally, when using the cross subnet routing feature, I want to make you aware of a few limitations that currently exist. As we've discussed in this video series, Dante Director requires an internet connection. An internet outage or loss of connectivity to Dante Director may result in audio dropouts when routing audio across subnets. Cross subnet routing also relies on unicast clocking, which is configured within Dante Director. There is a known issue where some devices fail to properly cache and recover the unicast clocking configuration after a reboot. If this happens during an internet outage or Dante Director service interruption, media may not recover until Dante Director connectivity is restored. Please consider these limitations carefully before using the cross subnet routing feature. If your installation is considered critical or needs to operate without internet connectivity, Audinate recommends using a single subnet until these issues are resolved. If you're interested in learning more, try Dante Director free for 30 days with your network. Just visit getdante.com to sign up for a trial today.